Hello everybody, I would first off like to just make a quick thank you to Northwestern Polytechnic for holding this research conference and allowing me to present my presentation here to you today. My name is Brendan Sincerak and I'm a second year student here at Northwestern Polytechnic taking my Bachelor's of Science and Kinesiology through the Physical Education and Kinesiology Department. My research project is entitled Google searching for education materials produced by the Canadian Anesthesiologist Society and whether or not they produce similar information regarding the risks of anesthesia. Just for anybody who is unaware of what, what anesthesia is, it's a state of controlled temporary loss of sensation or awareness that is ultimately induced for medical purposes. And anesthesiologists will provide patients with context specific information about the risks of their anesthetic and this is very very critical because patients need to be informed about how the risks of anesthesia can sometimes be severe or possibly common after undergoing it and patients are sometimes encouraged to supplement their understanding using the Canadian Anesthesiologist Societies or CAS's online educational materials and the reason why clinicians direct patients to the CAS is because it has established itself as a trusted source of information with the mandate to advocate for and to educate patients about the risks of anesthesia. So here's a problem. 72% of North Americans use search engines such as Google to gather health information and patients who are undergoing anesthesia will often try to enhance their understanding by supplementing recommended sources of information with Google. And what some patients assume is that more information always, is always better, however, that is not always the case. Learning more about the risks of anesthesia in general may not effectively inform the patient about their particular risk they can possibly experience. And that is because the risks of anesthesia will vary substantially based upon factors such as pre-surgical health status, operation seriousness, and the type of anesthesia employed for the medical procedure. And if websites disclose dissimilar and uncontextualized list of the risks of anesthesia, patients who do supplementary searches may become confused and misinformed about their specific risk associated with their anesthetic. So based on these problems, the study purpose was to compare the risks that were disclosed between both online sources of information, the CAS and Google search results, and across all the examined websites together. And in addition to that, we looked into how well the Google search results contextualize the risks based upon the factors such as pre-anesthetic health status, planned surgery type, and the anticipated anesthetic treatment associated with the medical procedure. Okay, so for our project here, research ethical board approval was not required as all the online documents we collected were all from the public domain. And all documents discussing risk disclosure from the CAS website were identified and downloaded. We then used a VPN with the location of Toronto to complete a Google search with the search term risks of anesthesia. Toronto was used simply because it is like the largest center in Canada where the results would have been tailored to the largest number of people. And it should further be noted that these results were the same as when we did this search with our location here in northern Alberta and with the VPN location of Vancouver as well. A composite list of the risks of anesthesia were then extracted from the top 10 Google search results, and the disclosed risks were then analyzed using network analysis. And the network here is basically just the identified list of risks from each of the websites. And in network analysis, the dots or nodes are connected to one another by lines or edges based upon agreement between any of the two nodes. So for our purposes, the nodes would be each individual website and the edges would represent agreement in a risk that was disclosed by two websites. The more saturated our network is, the better the agreement between the websites is. So our, for our project, agreement was evaluated using several metrics of overall network density, including positive agreement between the CAS and the composite list from the Google search results and positive agreement between all the examined websites as well, including the CAS. Positive agreement is essentially referring to the risks that were stated on at least two of the websites, whether on the CAS or one of the Google search results, 
hence explaining that they agreed with each other. And the compiled data was analyzed using UCINet and Microsoft Excel. So we're just going to hop right into the results. We'll have a few different figures we're going to look at here. So this plot shows us that the composite Google search results provide a more appreciable list of risks than the CAS website did. And even consulting only the first Google search result would still provide a more comprehensive list of risks of anesthesia than the CAS website did for patients. So this second figure shows us how the number of risks progressively increases as one searches further into the Google search results, and patients are informed nearly triple the risks of anesthesia after consulting the top Google search result alone. And basically, this is just showing that patients don't have to visit very many websites in order to get a lot more information than the CAS website is actually providing regarding the risks of anesthesia. The next figure is a plot showing all the risks that were disclosed and how many times a single risk was actually disclosed by every website. And there are two big takeaways that we can get from this plot. The first being that nearly half of the overall identified 61 risks were identified by only one of the 11 websites. And another big takeaway is how not a single risk was disclosed by all 11 websites together. For those who may be curious, this figure shows us the most common risks disclosed by all 11 of the websites, and it's a demonstration how the search results have a very high disparity in the severity and prevalence in the risks that they disclose, where the most stated risks appear to be some of the most common and mild side effects of anesthesia, such as nausea, sore throat, vomiting, and the rarest and more severe risks of anesthesia, such as death and anesthesia awareness, which are obviously very, very severe. However, definitely not as common as post anesthetic sore throat or post-operative nausea and vomiting. This figure shows us numerous metrics of positive agreement. So positive agreement between all 11 websites, positive agreement between the CAS and a composite of the Google search results, positive agreement between the CAS and each website individually, and positive agreement between the top two Google search results themselves. So we're gonna zoom in on agreement between all 11 of the websites and positive agreement was 6.7% between all 11 websites while negative agreement was 62% across all 11 websites. So based on our figure here, this shows that the websites demonstrated good agreement about what risks should not be included. So generally good negative agreement and terrible agreement about what risks should be included. So absolutely terrible positive agreement. To put this into perspective even more, we can draw the average network and compare it visually to an ideal network. So on the left side, we have an 11 node network with 100% agreement for one risk, and this is ideal. And in this hypothetical situation, each website discloses a given risk for a total of 55 edges within the network, and in contrast to this, on the right hand side, we have an 11 node network with the median level of positive agreement we observe for one risk. And in this commonly observed situation, two websites disclosed a given risk and nine websites did not disclose that given risk for a total of only one edge in the network. And on the flip side of the coin, on the right hand side, the bottom figure, we have an 11 node network with the median level of negative agreement we observe for one risk. In this commonly observed situation, nine websites omitted to disclose a given risk, while two websites disclose that risk for a total of 36 edges within the network. To see whether the risks being disclosed were being adequately contextualized based on factors known to increase the risk of anesthesia, we classified the Google search results based on whether they stratified risks based on a person's health status, upcoming surgery type, and the anticipated anesthetic treatment they would likely receive. And we divided this disclosure into complete disclosure, partial disclosure, or none, or no disclosure. And as shown below, we consider stratification to be complete if the website discloses a separate list of risks for each level of a factor. So just, I guess, kind of for example, the websites with complete stratification of risks based on anesthesia type 
had a separate list of risks for the three primary types of anesthesia, that being general anesthesia, regional anesthesia, and local anesthesia. So the left figure shows us that none of the websites completely stratified risks based on pre-anesthetic health status or the anticipated surgery type, while just over 30% of the websites completely stratified risks based on anticipated anesthetic treatment. And the right figure shows us that, interestingly, the websites ranked higher in the Google search results tended to have better stratification based on the three key factors we investigated, and this is shown by the higher proportion of yellow and green boxes. This shows us that the Google algorithm is tracking something important regarding how good the contextualization of the top Google search results are. We don't know what that is, we just know that the algorithm is doing something to make sure that the top Google search results are most likely going to be the bit most accurate and best for those looking to investigate the risks of anesthesia. Here's what we can take from the results. There was poor agreement between the CIS website and the Google search results, and also amongst the Google search results themselves. Most Google search results do not provide a full contextualized list of the risks of anesthesia, and as shown in the previous slide, the Google search results do not provide full contextualization regarding pre-anesthetic health status and surgery type. And this is most likely because there are far too many that affect the risks of anesthesia. And a Google search results in a more exhaustive list of the risks of anesthesia, while the CAS results in a far more curated list in the risks of anesthesia. So the implications of these findings are that Google searching the risks of anesthesia ultimately provides conflicting and decontextualized information. This has the potential to confuse, overwhelm, frighten, or even misinform patients who supplement a source like the CAS with Google search results. And while the gut instinct is to try to take the initiative to gather as much information as possible regarding risks of anesthesia, caution is ultimately advised for patients who supplement recommended information sources like the CAS with Google searching. I would just like to make a quick acknowledgement and offer a sincere thank you to one of my kinesiology instructors, Alexander Villafranca, for his assistance in analyzing and displaying the data that we collected for this research project. His assistance and guidance was instrumental for this project's completion, as this was actually my first time doing research at a post-secondary level, so I'd just like to offer a sincere thank you to him. So, these are just the references that I used for my research project and yeah that's about it I would just like to thank all of you guys for giving me your time and for letting me present to you guys here today and I would be happy to answer any questions that any of you may have for me take care